Well, hello there, everybody, and welcome to today's teaching tips with me, Sally Cathcart. And I'm delighted if you've if you've come along to join me today. I'm delighted if you've come along to join me today for today's live teaching tips. Now, um, what I'm talking about today is the benefits of limiting practice time. And um, I think this is a really interesting one, this particular idea of the less time we have available, then the more focused we become in what we do. Let me take, give you an example. So um, I like going on trains and I find when I'm working on trains, I am at my most productive. And the, the, the reason why is because I have a finish time. I have a destination. If I'm going to London, I might have two hours. And I know that the work I've got to get done, I have got to get done in that practice, in that time, in those two hours. So I, I sit there and I really focus and it, it really does create um, a tremendous sense of not necessarily urgency, but they're just very, very productive, very efficient is the word I think I'm looking for. It makes me really efficient. Now, have you ever tried this in your practice as well? Setting a timer, trying to recreate that sense of being on the train. I know you don't have to get off at the end of it, but setting a timer is one way of really giving yourself that lovely focus. Quite often do this with my students as well. And what I'll do for them is I will actually set slightly curious time, like one minute and 13 seconds, two minutes and 40 seconds, because it's curious enough to just to kind of capture their imagination. And actually it, it motivates them to go and do the practice. And you say to them, now I'd like you to practice this session, this section, just this little passage, and I'll go into that in a bit more detail in a moment. I'd like to practice just that section for absolutely no more than one minute and 13 seconds. No more, no less. You have to keep practicing that until your timer goes off. They go, oh, I say, you're not allowed to go ab uh, over that time. And they make a really, really big thing about you can't go over that one minute and 30 seconds. And it acts in the same way. As I say, they get a little bit curious about it. So I'll show you what I mean. But before I do, I'm just going to see if I have any way that I can see who has come to join me, because I know I've got some people here, um, but I'm not sure whether I can actually view who's come to join me. I don't think I can on here. So my apologies, thank you so much for, um, for coming and listening. So let me show you though what I mean by that. And I'm going to take as an example um, the, the, the pet sold minuet and G. I've just chosen a passage from that. Um, and it's particularly the left hand uh, for this little section. Is, is moving around it's got the octaves etc and we know that in this particular piece one of the big problems is the independent movement of the hands so I might say to a student right I'd like you to practice that this week I'd like to practice on four different days and I'd like you to practice that section for one minute and 13 seconds so it's it's good to set that time but now you have to make kind of make the um, make the goal really really obvious and what you're aiming to do is to get all the right notes. Uh, I'd like you to detach the notes and play them with the right fingering. The rhythm is obviously there as well. However, it is mostly crotchets here. Um, so I would probably not overwhelm them with the rhythm as well. So they need to get the right notes and the right fingering and detach the notes. Those are the three goals that they're aiming to do. And I would demonstrate one, Two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Yeah, that to them. And then I'd say, okay, so when you set the timer, there are two practice strategies you're going to use. The first practice strategy is to actually do plus one. And the second practice strategy, when you get it all the way through, then you can do the magic number three. Now you can see I've got my ducks here ready to help me. I'm going to be setting the timer now and I'm going to do that practice. My aim is the uh, right notes with the right fingering and detached and I'm going to use plus one followed by magic number three. Let's see how one minute and 13 seconds sounds. 
feels like shall we okay let me just put that on here we go so I'm first of all going to do plus one plus one means one note okay okay that wasn't so good so I'm just going to do it again have to think about it first okay that's fine that feels better now I'm going to go plus one okay that was fine Next note, think about that. Okay, now I've got it. Now, 39 seconds left. Magic number three. Yay! Overcome Super Sally. Okay, next one. Oh, not so good. Better do it again. Second one, 14 seconds left. Will I do it? Yay! And I've got six seconds in hand. Fantastic. And my time is about to go off. Okay, there we go. So I'll stop there. So, um, setting the timer like that, I mean, obviously, that was quite a um, a fast time to do it in and I was working very effectively and very efficiently um, but it, it, it can work in exactly the same way with maybe a few more um, uh, aids for your students but give them the goals this is what you're aiming to achieve and this is how you're going to get there with the practice strategies and this is the time that you've got to do it in and then they will achieve and they will be motivated to go and do their practice so setting a limited practice time works for your students to be honest it works for us as well okay have fun with that one thank you so much for coming to join me i can see i've got quite a few people here so have happy practicing and um happy teaching bye for now